Mark Kriegel, of course, Max Kellerman as well for joining us. The two heavyweights, Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. Do not forget, it all goes down February 22nd at the MGM Grand. You can order the fight on pay-per-view, the Fox Sports app, or ESPN+. Plus. We will see you there. Bye-bye. When it comes to America's most loved pizza, love is limitless. Yeah, I, you know, you know, I mean, regardless, we're going to be watching the fight. I know a lot of you scumbags are going to stream it, but, you know, we're going to be watching the fight. So, you know, we can complain all we want. I don't know. You know, okay, well, let's do it this way. Let's talk about the undercard. The undercard looking like right now is going to be, obviously, Wilder versus Fury. It's going to be um, Gio Santissima versus Emmanuel Navarrete. And Prince Charles Martin versus Gerald Washington. And then news just came out today that there's going to be another fight with a PBC versus top rank fighter. Maybe on like a lower scale. I don't know. I don't know if Big Baby Miller's on the card. It's a rumor going around, but not a very, you know, like credible one. The fight is going to be $79.99 on pay-per-view here in the States. Over in the UK, it's going to be on BT Sport. How much do you guys pay over there? About... 35 bucks or something about 25 british pounds some shit like that and what's really confusing to me is how are they like fighting twice and the wbc is not ordering like like it doesn't make sense so if you don't know there's two fights it's official they are fighting twice no matter who wins or loses they're going to fight again and if you think like if they're struggling with this one like do you really want a third one i mean you would have to think like if wilder were to lose then he should he's going to get a shot at his belt back but if fury i don't know if fury wins like three times for a fight like this seems to be kind of overdoing it but the way they talk like they're saying that shit is done you know why am I not talking about the fight that's going on tonight? Danny Garcia on Showtime? Because I did videos all week on it. What are you talking about? And you didn't even give me a chance. The press conference just ended. Hey, somebody put that asshole on timeout. Yo, don't get me untethered, man. The fucking press conference just ended. So anyway. When you look at the fact that the rematch didn't happen when it was supposed to. And Tyson Fury signed with top rank to, you know, get more exposure here in the States. You know, Tom Schwartz and that scary incident with Otto Wallin when he had that nasty cut over his eye. He went to WWE, but that shit has been forgotten. You know, how much has he really, really grown? Actually, I can say that his status has grown here. And that the rematch, would the rematch have been bigger then or is it bigger now? It's hard for me to say. I think the rematch is bigger now. Here, I'm going to pull the press conference up and we're going to recap some of the um, um, stuff. So let's go to my DVR here. Please like the video. Please subscribe. We're going to be here tonight for uh, Danny Garcia versus Ivan Radkatch. I'm going to be covering all the three major fights on that card. We're going to be here for the post-fight press conference. We providing full coverage for that fight. We were here for the weigh-in. We were here for the uh, the first press conference, the second final fight week press conference. So we're doing our shit. All right. So let me pull this up here on the DVR, and we're gonna go back to the beginning and recap some of this stuff. Let's see here. Yeah, we'll start with Max Kellerman's part. How's that? The only problem is my sound is fucked up. So I have to use my iPad to listen to the sound because for some reason my um my speakers and my headphones are not picking it up. So you're going to see a little bit of a, a delay. So let's start here. Damn. Hold on. Let's start here. Press conference stage where Wilder and Fury will square off in just a few minutes' time. Very warm welcome back to Los Angeles. Big welcome as well to longtime boxing analyst, commentator Max Kellerman, live from New York with us. At Max
as well. It's a long time boxing. Analyst. I like this right here. Now, I like the fact that how they're. Now, I got to be honest with you. She's the most knowledgeable over on that side. Like, in regard. Put it this way. She's one of the most knowledgeable boxing media TV people, like, out there, believe it or not, if you haven't been following her. Like, she ain't no joke. She know her shit. She not no casual. So to Mac, so to 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 um, have her matched up with Max Kellerman, you know, is some good shit right here. Max, of course, you've covered so many championship fights now. I want to ask you to put the Wilder Fury rematch into context for us. Where does this one sit for you on the scale of greatest heavyweight fights of all time? Well, that's up to these guys. These guys, you know, when you think about heavyweight rematches, the last one of this level and or beyond was Tyson Holyfield too. But Tyson and Holyfield had deeper resumes than these guys do right now. Wilder and Fury have both done some amazing things, but they haven't fought a lot of really top fighters in or around their primes yet. So if this turns out to be the dramatic kind of fight that the first fight was, and these two guys go on, at least one of them does, to establish themselves as a truly great heavyweight champion, a long reigning champion, etc. Um, then this will rise in the kind of all-time heavyweight rankings. It's really up to them. Well, so one of the major fights that you've covered was Tyson Fury's upset win over Vladimir Klitschko back in 2015. That was the win, of course, that saw Tyson Fury become the lineal heavyweight champion. Some people say that he lost that claim when he announced that he was retiring. What weight do you give that title, and do you believe it's on the line in this fight? I do, and that's a great question, because throughout boxing history, Jim Jeffries, a uh, hundred years ago, plus at this point, retired as undefeated heavyweight champion, then came out six years later to fight Jack Johnson. There was no talk of a lineal championship then, you know, that it still existed for Jeffries, because a consensus had formed around Jack Johnson. Same thing with Joe Lewis. He retires, Ezra Charles becomes the recognized heavyweight champion. I, and two years plus after the fact. And this is now longer even than the distance between when Joe Lewis retired and when he fought Ezra Charles. You know, when you look at Tyson Fury retiring after the, the uh, Klitschko fight and since he's come back. I would say, though, that if a heavyweight champion wins the, if a heavyweight wins the lineal title, he has a lineal claim to the championship, and he has not lost, and there is no real consensus that's formed around another guy, Keep in mind that consensus was forming around Anthony Joshua, in fact, as much at least as it was ar around Deontay Wilder. Then I would say until I see Tyson Fury lose, to me, he has a lineal claim on the title. There's a difference, though, between line lineal and undisputed. You may say if he doesn't beat Wilder and then maybe one of them beat Joshua or the, or the fighter who winds up beating Joshua, if that's a guy like Usyk, they're not the undisputed champion, okay. But I believe that Tyson Fury is still the lineal champion. I mean, listen, as we all know, there's nothing like a spectacular knockout puncher, is there, to get the public's attention. This era, of course, is blessed with one in Deontay Wilder. Is he already in the running for hardest hitting heavyweight ever, in your opinion? Yeah, I think he has the biggest... Well, how do you define that? Is it the one single biggest shot? I think Deontay Wilder's right hand is the biggest knockout punch in the history of boxing, period. That one shot. I wouldn't say he hits with each shot as hard as, say, Mike Tyson did. Because Mike Tyson, the uppercut... But, you know, the question is, you know, Tyson Fury is saying that um, he wants to, you know, go toe to toe. You know, I think he's bluffing. A lot of people think he's bluffing. Deontay Wilder think he's bluffing. You know, he's saying he wants to go toe to toe to show, you know, he doesn't want it to go to the cards because he feels that if it goes to the cards, he's going to get robbed. You know, and me and my personal opinion, I think he's asking, you know, for Death Wish. For example, um, if you haven't got a chance to see it yet, Dylan White released an interview on his channel, his personal YouTube channel, where he's given some advice about the situation. Here, I'm going to pull it up. Um, he just released this video no less than, no more than about 12 hours ago. Less than that, actually. <laughs> Here, let me go to the uh, part. Each shot. Less than no more than about twelve Hold hours on. ago. Less than that. <laughs> I do have a Nigerian no, you passport. Don't. I, how much do you want to bet? I've got a Nigerian. It's sure, I don't have a Nigerian you know. passport. I don't have it. Do you think I, who walks around with their passport? With my bag. If I get my bag, okay. <laughs> he said he was born here, but I swear he's not. My mum's born in Sri Lanka. Mm. The same way he was born in the, the Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
in North London. No, you didn't. You, you were born in Amazon. You were a leaf for, <laughs> you were, you were leaf for boxers for a few years. Oh, I, I could say so much, but I'm actually not going to. We've got other heavyweight fights going on. Obviously, Don't we've me. got Tyson Fury <laughs> and Mr. Wilder. Mm -hmm. I recently watched the interview with Tyson Fury's uh, new trainer. And he was talking about Sugar going Hill. for yeah Sugar Hill, and he was talking about going for the KO. Would you advise that? No, because then he makes a 50-50 fight, and I think if he boxes, much more of a a 70-30 fight, you know, maybe mm. uh, a 60-40 fight. If he goes to a shootout, actually, if he if he tries to go for the KO, he makes it. Now, listen, I agree with this. Before I let him finish, I agree that, you know, if, if Tyson Fury decides to fight that type of fight, you know, he's given Wilder a better chance to win. But how does Deontay Wilder fight on the inside? You know, Deontay Wilder, he needs to line that nuclear bomb up. You know, how does he fight if his shit is smothered? You know, like Tyson Fury fought Otto Wallin when Otto Wallin, you know, had cut his eye. Sixty forty fight the anti Wilder, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or a thirty, 30 uh, or a seventy thirty fight the anti Wilder. If he boxes the other way around, mm -hmm. you know. So being honest, we know. But then saying that also, the anti Wilder is kind of chinny as well. Every time he gets tagged, you get rocked. So mm -hmm. Fury is a big guy, and um, he could could potentially stop him. But I don't think that's a great game plan for Tyson Fury. But I think they're just saying that to get Wilder to try and box or whatever. You know, I think in boxing a lot of things get said and not a lot of things happen. So let's see. Do you think Wilder will try and outbox Tyson Fury maybe to prove a point? Wilder is a note if Wilder outbox Tyson Fury then I'll be shocked. But well, this is boxing. Changing up. But if he outbox Tyson Fury, I'll be very shocked. Mm -hmm. Be very, very shocked. So I know you was previously asked uh who you think would win. Mm -hmm. Um You didn't really give an answer to be honest. I, I want a direct answer of who you think would win. I wanna I want direct 10 million pounds in my bank account but it don't work like that all the time does it will you be open to sharing some of that 10 million if you do get of course you're yeah. my boy a boss <laughs> yes yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you 500 quid what? <laughs> 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 the finger hand the hooks the straight right hand he had more shots that could knock you out as soon as he touched you and there are other heavyweights in that conversation too ernie shaver's right hand george forming with a variety of shots but for any one punch I would take Deontay's Wild, Deontay Wilder's right hand number one. He's six foot seven with long levers and real speed, and he knows how to use the leverage. He's a devastating puncher, like a Tommy Hearns at heavyweight with that right hand. This feels like a really special day, Max, and a special event. This is two major networks, two separate sides of the street, so to speak, coming together for one of the biggest fights in the decade. You've got more networks than ever carrying the sport right now. Years from now, do you think that this will be... Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, there's no real replay value in the press conference. There's not yet yeah, the press conference is over. There's not um, any real like animosity in Eclipse. You know, I like when Deontay Wilder gets, uh, um, you know, starts like making up words and sending out like biblical death threats and shit. I like that shit. But, you know, they were subdued and you can tell the commentators, you know, because they mentioned it twice that you know they expected some fireworks but i didn't you can tell by the tone of the first press conference it's just that you know it's just not there you know maybe fight week but you but they're not fighters who have to make weight so they're not going to be irritable or they shouldn't be so i don't know